Hello everybody and welcome back to Operation Research Discussion. Today we will discuss about special case of linear programming uh, solution that is degenerate linear programming solution. Among several special cases of linear programming, one is degenerate linear programming solution. This, the objective of uh, this lesson is to find out the solutions of uh, degenerate linear uh, programming. Before moving to degeneracy, let's have some idea about uh, tie breaking in the simplex method. There are two types of tie. In simplex method, there is a tie for the entering basic variable and there is a tie for the leaving basic variable. As you remember in uh, lesson 5, when we are solving the linear programming using simplex method, the maximization linear programming using simplex method, so when we determine the entering variable or the pivot column, so we look at the CJ minus ZJ row and we select the maximum positive, that is uh, 3 in this case, the maximum positive is 3, so uh, this column becomes a pivot column and x1 become an entering variable an entering variable but when if two or more values of zj minus zj are equal if two or more values of uh, cj minus zj are equal so we call there is a tie there is a tie and in this case we have different rules we have different rules to handle such type of uh, situation rule number one if there is a tie between two decision variables then the selection can be made arbitrarily we can select any we can select any uh, let's look at this example look here the cj minus zj row uh, the maximum positive number of cj minus zj row is uh, three and three so both are equal and both are the, two, the decision variable, so we can choose either of, uh, either x1 column or x2 column as the entering variable. Rule number two, if there is a tie between the decision variables and the slack or surplus variables, so select the decision variable uh, to enter into the base. And rule number uh, Three, if there is a tie between two slack variables, then selection can be made arbitrarily. We can select one of the two. So here is an example. If there is a, a tie between the decision variables and the slack variables like this, so we can we have to select the decision variables that is x1 column. And if we have a tie between uh, two slack variables, so we have uh, to choose either uh, of the two slack variables. A linear program is said to be, by the way, a linear program is said to be degenerate if one or more of the basic variables have a value of zero. As you remember in lesson five, by the way, you can refer back to lesson five, that is solutions of uh, maximization linear programming using simplex method. In that case, we already said that uh, the basic variables have a value uh, of, uh, the basic variables have a value which is different from Zero, whereas uh, the non-basic variables, uh, the non-basic variables have a value of zero. But in this case, in this special case, a linear program is said to be degenerate if and on, if one or more of the basic variables have a value of zero, which is totally uh, opposed to is what we have discussed in lesson five, because this is a special condition. At any iteration of the simplex method, more than one variable is eligible to leave. To leave, that means them. Um, uh, minimum ratio are equal hence the next simplex iteration produces a degenerate solution this is uh, concept is known as by the way a tie degeneracy does not uh, cause any particular difficulties when we solve when we solve uh, the linear programming using graphical method graphical method but uh, we may encounter a problem when we are solving using simplex method one of the problem uh, when we solve using simplex method is we may face a cycling. A cycling. Cycling means just uh, uh, we get a repeated or we get the same value of uh, the table 
with a repeated iteration without improving the objective function with the same objective function that cycling may be indefinitely the practical implication of uh, this condition that is degenerate indicates that the model has at least one redundant constraint. Redundant constraint means it is a constraint that if we remove that constraint, it cannot affect the feasible solution space. So we can remove the redundant constraint without affecting the uh, feasible solution space. If the minimum ratio is equal, the minimum ratio that means the right hand side divided by the pivot column when we uh, determine where we want to determine the uh, pivot row or the living variable. So we have to calculate first the minimum ratio, the minimum ratio of what? The right hand side with that of the pivot column. You, you can refer back to lesson five. Then the iteration uh, of the simplex method are repeated or cycled. If the ratio is equal, the cycle may be indefinitely without arriving at the optimal solution. So to minimize such iteration to arrive to the optimal solution, so we have to follow the uh, following procedure, that is, divide the coefficient of the slack variables in the simplex table where the degeneracy is detected by the corresponding pivot numbers or pivot numbers of the key columns, or we can say the pivot columns in the row starting from left to right. The row which contains the smallest ratio, comparing from left to right column, which becomes the pivot row or the key row. And the other uh, rule is when there is a tie between the slack and the artificial variables to leave the basis, so artificial variable is selected to leave the base and there is no need to apply the procedure for solving degeneracy under such cases. Now let's do an example regarding to the degenerate linear programming. So solve the following uh, linear programming, maximization z equals 3x1 plus 9x2 subject to the constraint x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal to 8, x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 4, and x1 and x2 greater than or equal to 0. So let's start our solution. Uh, let's add the slack variables because uh, the inequality is less than or equal to. So let's add the slack variable S1 and S2 uh, to the uh, constraints respectively. Uh, the first constraint is the second constraint. Is, so the constraint become like this, as you see. And when we add S1 and S2, the inequality becomes uh, converted into equality. And we add uh, with zero coefficient to the objective function we add the slack variables to the objective function with zero coefficients and we make those uh, uh, x1 x2 s1 and s2 non-negative non-negative now let's continue uh, let's uh, establish the uh, initial basic feasible uh, solution table so as you remember in lesson five uh, here are the basic variables these are the basic variable with uh, the coefficient, the coefficient of the basic variable, and Cj is, by the way, Cj is the coefficient of the uh, objective function, whereas Cb is the coefficient of basic variable. So, the, in the table, these are the coefficients of the constraints, right? These are the uh, coefficients of the uh, constraints along with the slack variable coefficients, right? And these are the right hand side. These are the right uh, hand side. So the, to determine or to calculate Zj, we have to just use this formula, summations of Cb times uh, Xn. So uh, Cb is 0, 0 times 1 plus 0 times 1. We, we uh, put here 0. 0 times 4 uh, plus 0 times 2, we put here uh, 0. 0 times uh, 1 uh, plus 0 times 0, we put here uh, 0. And 0 times uh, 0 plus 0 times 1, we put here zero so we get all zero and now let's uh, subtract zj from cj and we get three minus zero three nine minus zero uh, nine zero minus zero 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 minus zero zero so we get like this now now we have to determine the entering variable the entering variable by uh, selecting the maximum positive of cj minus zj uh, 
the maximum of Cj minus Zj, as you see here, is 9, right? 9 is the maximum positive number. So uh, this column is a pivot column, and x2 is an entering variable. x2 is an entering variable. So once we determine the entering variable, the next task is to determine what? To determine the living variable. So the living variable is determined by, first, we have to calculate we have to calculate the minimum ratio that is dividing the right hand side by the pivot column, the corresponding uh, values of the pivot column. So 8 divided by 4, we get 2 here. Uh, 4 divided by 2, we get 2 here. So we get the same or we get equal minimum ratio showing that there is degeneracy. There is degeneracy because the minimum ratios are equal. So in this case, in this case, we have to follow a different approach to uh, select. That is, that's what you call. We just select the identity. We just put out the identity. That is, the slack variable coefficients like this, the slack variable coefficients, and divide this this uh, column with the corresponding pivot column with the corresponding pivot column and dividing the coefficients by the corresponding element of the pivot column or key column, we obtain what? We obtain this ratio. We obtain this ratio and this ratio has a value of uh, this 0 0.250 0 and 0 0.25. Now, now, comparing the ratios from left to right, column-wise, the minimum ratio occurs for the second row. That is, minimum of 0 0.25, as you see here, 0 0.25 and 0, so 0 is the minimum Thus, variable S2 or the slack variable S2 is selected to leave the base. It is a living uh, variable, a living variable. Since the minimum ratio occurs uh, for the second row, therefore the variable S2 or the slack variable S2 is selected to leave the basis. So S2 is a living variable, whereas X2 X2 is the entering variable. So X2 replaces S2 along with its coefficient. And from this table, uh, we can understand that 2 is an intersection of the pivot column with the pivot row. Pivot row. So it is a pivot value. So we have to make in this step, we have to make uh, the pivot value to be 1 by using elementary row operations. That is uh, R2 uh, equals R2 divided by uh, 2 divided by itself, right? So we uh, get... Uh, the value of uh, 2 becomes 1 and the remaining uh, value that is uh, the remaining value in the pivot column have to be 0 using another elementary row operation that is uh, this one r1 equals uh, r1 minus 4 r2 so we get uh, 0 this uh, value so now let's calculate zj zj a uh, 0 times minus 1, 0 times minus 1 plus 9 times 1 over 2, we get 9 over 2. 0 times 0 uh, plus 9 times 1, we get 9. 0 times 1 uh, plus 0 time, 9 times 0, we get uh, 0. 0 times minus 2 plus 9 times 1 over 2, we get 9 over 2. And uh, now, uh, we already calculated, by the way, the right-hand side uh, in this previous table, in the previous table here. And, and now let's calculate Cj minus Zj. Uh, we just subtract uh, Zj from uh, Cj. Uh, 3 minus 9 over 2 minus 3 over 2. 9 minus 9, 0. 0 minus 0, 0. 0 minus uh, 9 over 2 minus 9 over 2. Now let's check the optimality. When we check the optimality now, uh, Cj minus Zj has uh, less than or equal to zero in this case. All are negative and zero, so optimality is arrived because it is a maximization. And now the solution becomes S1 equals the basic variables values are S1 equals uh, zero and S X2 equals two. Uh, since the basic va variables of S1 has a value of zero, so there is a degeneracy. The degeneracy means uh, at least one of the basic variables has a value of uh, 
uh, zero. So S1 is a basic variable which is found uh, here and has a value of zero. So uh, there is degeneracy, degeneracy. That is S1 equals zero, X2 equals two, and the maximum value of Z equals 18, 18. Now let's check, let's do this uh, example with graphical method, let's check it. So in the graphical method, first we have to change the inequality to equality uh, simply, then we have to plot the intercepts on the xy plane, so we get, uh, for the first in, uh, constraint, we get such type of graph, and for the second constraint, we get uh, such type of graph, and we have to shade, by the way, the uh, corresponding regions, because they are less than equal to, we have to shade uh, towards uh, uh, the origin. Now let's put them uh, together, and uh, uh, here is, uh, this region is a feasible solution space region, here is the feasible solution space region, and now let's find out the corner, uh, the corner points, that is the origin here, 0, 2, and here, 4, uh, 0. So, we have to check all the corner points by inserting into the objective function. So when we insert in the objective function, we get uh, 0, 0, we get 0, 0, 2, we get 18, and 4, 0, we get 12. So the maximum, uh, the corner point that can maximize our objective function is 0, 2, that is this one. This one is the corner point that can maximize our objective function. So, as you see from the constraint here, uh, one of the applications of uh, the uh, degeneracy is uh, uh, to show the, uh, or to tell that there is a redundant uh, constraint. So, as you see, the graph shows that there is one redundant constraint, that is x1 uh, plus 4x2 less than or equal to 8. This constraint is redundant, when we say redundant constraints, if we remove the redundant constraint, it cannot affect it cannot affect the feasible solution space. So we can remove the redundant constraints without affecting the feasible solution space. Uh, try to do this exercise. Uh, check whether the following problem is a degenerate solution or not. That means uh, find uh, the solutions of uh, this uh, problem using simplex method, and if the basic uh, variable has a, a value of zero, so we can say that it has a degenerate uh, solution, or if not, it's not a degenerate, uh, it is a non-degenerate, a non-degenerate, or you can check that if the minimum values of, if the minimum ratio values uh, are equal, so uh, we can say that the degenerates will uh, uh, happen, or the, there is a degeneracy, so check that and if you have any problem uh, or any comment you can write on the comment box so thank you for listening have a good time uh, bye